Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com. I'm just going to show you in my video here today uh, how to wire for a uh, setting up a switched receptacle. Now, uh, all codes and that are different in all different areas, so uh, I always advise that you check it with your local codes, pull any permits you need to have. In some areas, electrical projects like this aren't able to be done legally uh, by yourself, so uh, you may have to hire an electrician anyway. So check that all out before you proceed. But this is how I would do it. So when I talk about switched receptacle, there's a couple different ways to do it, and there's also a couple different scenarios. First scenario I'm going to deal with is, in both of these cases, uh, what I've got is I've taken and uh, set it up. So this, the top part of the receptacle, and by the way, I've got no power to this right now. The top receptacle here uh, would have constant power as long as the breaker was on. And this receptacle, the bottom half, would only have power when the switch was turned on in the wall. So a common case for this is generally in your front room where uh, you might have a lamp plugged in that you want to be able to turn on and off with a switch. Okay, So that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with one, re one half switched and one half constant in both these cases right now. Now, having said that, there's two ways you could do this. And uh, the first way is to have power coming to the, to the plug-in itself first before it goes to the switch. Okay, So in that case, we've got power coming in and uh, we've got 14-2 wire in this case, yours might be different, but 14-2 wire <clears throat> and uh, so this black, one of these black cables is the power coming in. Now we need to uh, do two things from this point. We need to send power over to the switch and we need to send constant power up to the receptacle. So to do that we've pigtailed here, we've put a jumper cable, I'm just going to turn this, we put a jumper cable coming up to the top receptacle, the top screw, because it's going to be constant power. Now the other thing you have to do if you're going to split a receptacle like this is if you look right in here, there'll be a flat piece of metal in this space between these two screws and you can see it on this new one. You can see the tab right here. You need to break that tab out if you're going to have two different power sources operating two different receptacles. Okay. So that's very important, otherwise you're going to have a big spark and boom and probably blow the breaker when you hit that switch. So, so make sure you take that tab out anytime you're splitting the sources there. Okay, so going back to the, how the power is running, so here's our constant source coming in. This one's always going to be live as long as the breaker's on. Now we have another black wire heading over to our switch in a 14-3 cable that comes to the switch. Here's our black coming in. This is constant power and then when we flip the switch it'll travel back through the red all the way back to the receptacle and that will power up your bottom receptacle. Okay so I think that's pretty clear. Uh, as far as the neutrals go, neutrals are all just um, uh, pigtailed together. Got a jumper coming off going to the neutral side. We don't break the tab out here. Okay because both of these can still share the same neutral so this tab does not get broke out. Uh, the other neutral line is heading over to the switch. Uh, in a lot of areas now they're asking by code to have a neutral available at every switch locations. So in this case we're not using it, I've just capped it off, we don't need it. If you had a dimmer or a timer some of them would require that you need that and that's why they're asking uh, in the new codes to put it there. Um, so that's all pretty straightforward. As far as grounding goes, your ground will be grounded at the, at the uh, breaker box. It's coming in through your supply. It's twisted together with any other grounds coming into that box, as well as one that's feeding and grounding the uh, receptacle itself. And it should be attached to the metal box in the back through a grounding screw. Same idea over here. There was a piece of ground wire in this cable that goes between the switch and the receptacle. So it's, it's twisted together up here and hooked together and it comes over and is simply uh, grounded to the ground screw in the back of that box. If your area calls for grounding on the switch then you would have another piece coming out and grounding the switch. So it all depends on your code. So that's for power coming to the receptacle before the switch. This example up here is we've got power supply coming to the switch before it goes to the receptacle. 
So again, the hot's coming in in the black. We've got them uh, pigtailed together. We've got a jumper coming out of there, coming to the switch. So that's sending power to the switch. Uh, the other black line that is twisted in here is going over to the receptacle and it's creating uh, or supplying constant power from the breaker to the top plug here that's going to be constantly powered up. At back here at the switch, we've got our constant power coming into the switch. When I flick the switch, now we're sending power down that red wire over to your receptacle and that's what's supplying power here at, at the split receptacle. Okay, so pretty basic. Same thing again, we've broken the tab out, right? Because we've got two different power sources coming. This side, we've got just our neutral on, the tab's still connected because we need it. We're grounded to the box. All that's just the same as what it was, was down below. So now, now you're saying, well, what if I want to have, let's just come down to this example. What if I want to have both of these operated on the same switch? Okay, that's not a problem. Most of the wiring all still stays the same. In this case, what we, all we'd have to do is not have that tab broken out and we don't need this jumper, okay? So we'd eliminate this jumper. These would still just be twisted together, two, two black wires. Power's going over to the switch, right there in the off position. When we flick it on, it's gonna come back in the red, which would be hooked onto either one of those screws. It wouldn't matter because if you've got that tab in there, they're both gonna be powered up no matter which one is hooked to the wire, okay? In this example up here, if we wanted to have both of these powered only when the switch is turned on, uh, what we would have to do is really, we, we wouldn't need 14, uh, would we? No, we wouldn't need 14 three wire in here. We'd only need 14 two wire or 12 two, depending on your situation. But uh, so everything, uh, let's see, everything right here would be all the same other than one of these wires wouldn't be in there. One of these black wires that was coming from over there or going over there wouldn't be needed. Okay, so you'd have a 14-2 here only. You'd have your black supply attached to the black jumper going to the switch. Uh, so when you turn the switch on, this would actually be a black wire because it'd be a 14-2. Uh, power would come down here. When you get over to the switch, you'd have your tab still in there and only a black wire attached. There wouldn't even be this red wire, okay? So that's if you wanted to have both switched. Now I'll just show you that this does work. We've got our little light set up here. Okay, so this is gonna show you that we've got uh, switched power at that bottom receptacle. I've got the switch off. Okay. So there, you can see that one obviously operates that way. And this one's constant. And the same for this, I guess I can show you that. Switched on, works, constant. Okay, so I think, I think that's fairly straightforward, depending on what you wanna do. Um, I think we've explained everything you need there. Uh, like I said, just check your local codes to make sure there's nothing different in your area. So as always, we're going to wrap things up with uh, encouraging you to click the thumbs up icon on the bottom of the screen, subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can see all our great videos and every one that gets published again. And you can follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, you can uh, also check out our Patreon campaign as well. If you want to give us a little donation, that'd be awesome if you think we helped you out. So uh, I guess that's all I can tell you. Thanks for watching.